Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Welcome back to Passionate World Talk Radio Network. Free masterclass on Empower Your Voice, Unlocking Your Podcasting Potential. Sponsored by Passionate World Talk Radio Network. Educate, enlighten, entertain. On today's masterclass, there are three topics that we're going to discuss. All three are very important for a potential podcaster to learn how to use effectively when presenting their podcast, either on a video or an audio. Video MP4, an audio MP3. The three topics are the seven C's of communication, the art of the interview, how to give an interview, and also importantly, when you arrive and show up as a potential guest yourself on some other's podcaster's podcast, how to give an interview. And the last one, which is very important, but most people don't seem to realize that, is the art of mastering your interpersonal, or what I call people skills. And without these people skills, you're going to find yourself up a creek with your potential listeners and your guests very quickly. So let's start out in the beginning. The seven C's of communication. What are they? The first one is clear. Craft your message with clarity. Be concise and avoid jargon. So what are they talking about? What they're saying is make sure everyone understands what you're trying to say. If you're not saying it in a succinct manner, then you're going to have confusion and you're going to have problems. And you'll have probably some people in the audience keep on asking the same question, trying to determine what exactly you're saying. Number two, concise. Get to the heart of your content. Respect your audience's time. Now, you've heard other podcasts, I'm sure. And sometimes it sounds like around the merry-go-bush bush because they don't really identify what the primary topic is on that particular podcast. Usually at the beginning of each podcast, when I give one, I tell to try to tell the audience exactly what they're going to listen to and why it's important for them to pay attention. And if you don't do this, you'll find that as quickly as your audience comes in to listen, they will also quickly leave. You cannot hold their attention. Number three, concrete. Use vivid examples and relatable stories. You want to make something believable, you have to give them good supporting material. I believe in ghosts. Really? Well, when was the last time you saw a ghost? Interesting enough, and then you go on to say, when I was eight years old, I was lying in bed, trying to go to sleep, and all of a sudden, I felt it. The bed went down. Oh, my God. The whole blanket just kind of caved down into the mattress. I knew I was the only one in the room. You'll hook your readers. Not only did your tone shift, but you brought them into the story, bringing them and making them believe that they also saw and felt the bed shift under the weight of an unknown unseen person. Correct. Fact check and ensure accuracy. Lots of times when you are presenting a video and or an audio, people in the audience will say, where can I find this information for myself? That's why when I put my podcast together, I always make sure that I have the URL that I put down and will provide upon request. And I'll also tell them who said it, if it's a direct quote, or who provide the statistics should they want to check it out for themselves. People are like that. They're not going to take everything on faith, and they want to believe that whatever you're telling them and presenting to them is the truth, the exact truth, nothing but the truth. So I'll help you to a piece of peanut butter and jam on bread. Sounds good. The next one is coherent. Organize your thoughts logically, which means when you 
and before you present your podcast, you want to go and research your material and the material that you write down as facts, figures, or opinions is the people's words or your words. Don't paraphrase because that's still considered copyright violation. You want to put it down in your own words, but you want to arrange them in a proper order. Remember, introduction, you introduce yourself, body, you present your information, have supporting material. Ending is when you tie everything up in a nice yellow ribbon. That's how you write up your blue books. That's how you start out on a report. That's how you present yourselves during an interview when looking for a job. All say the same thing. You have to be organized and be able to think things through before you present it. Otherwise, it'll just be a mishmash of information, opinions, sayings, and nobody will take you and believe anything you say. Courteous, be respectful and considerate. If somebody has a name that is foreign, make sure you learn how to pronounce it correctly. And if you don't, have them pronounce it for you and practice saying it. The same thing with words you put down as part of your keywords or phrases. If you don't know how to spell it, find out. Use the online directory. If you need a word that is different but means the same thing, look it up in the thesaurus. It is online. When you present your material, you can't go back and erase and say what you said. You have to make sure that you're using the right words. Spell them correctly. Use the right tenses. One of my biggest problems is I always get my verbs wrong. Don't make the same mistake. And you're going to ask me, does it make a difference? And I'm going to tell you, yes, it does. In any language besides English, you still have to speak it correctly. And the last one, completeness. Cover all relevant aspects. So if you're presenting something to your audience, you want to make sure that each thought follows the other. I'm sure you were taught this in English class when you took grammar. And they tell you that when you present your thoughts, you have to put them A, B, C, one, two, three. So each thought follows the other. So it sounds like a complete set of thoughts that you're going from A to B, B to C. No shortcuts here, please. I know it's difficult. When my son was taking math, he used to take shortcuts all the time. And then he couldn't figure out why he always blew the answers. Well, if you don't take the logical steps connecting all your ideas together, it's very easy to get lost and put down the wrong answer. So make sure when you write it out and when, when you present it, it makes sense. You don't want to be running around looking for a lab tool when it's right beneath your nose all along. Or have you ever seen your mother push her glasses or your father's push the glasses up over their forehead and have them rest on the top of their head? And then they spend the next two hours strewning papers and books and blankets and anything else they can find because they've misplaced their glasses. I've done that a couple of times. You do not want to misplace your glasses. The art of the interview, that is giving appropriate questions to the potential guests or participants to elicit responses that you know your potential audience wants to hear. So what are the questions? Who? What, where, when, why, and sometimes how. And before you even get online with your potential guests or other participants, read and research that particular guest and our participants. Know who they are. If they read a book, request an ebook and read it before you interview them. You need to know all about them. So when you question them, you're going to ask them questions that you know your potential audience is dying to learn about. It's your job to make the host the star of the interview. You are there just to draw out the information in an easy, definable manner. You are not there to upstage the person whom you are interviewing. That is the person 
who is the star. And the whole idea is after this interview, they can then come and say 24 or 48 hours later, you know what, Lillian, before I tried getting interviews from all over the country and I couldn't do it. And now I'm being besieged with requests, not only here in the States, but in Canada and overseas. Thank you. And that's what you want to hear. Now, as you, as a host, you may be invited to go on someone else's podcast as an expert on whatever you're good at. It could be a cooking, it can be gardening, it can be playing the violin. You can show people how to take photographs with an old fashioned camera, or you can go and show them and how you develop film. Whatever you're an expert on, they are going to ask you questions. So how do you get prepared as a potential guest yourself? Well, first of all, if you've written a book lately, I suggest strongly that you read, read your book and you prepare yourself with those questions. Who, what, where, when, why, and sometimes how. And then if you can get permission, you may want to read a short paragraph from the book, especially if it's nonfiction and you're trying to give advice or tips of how to do something. The other thing you may do is tell people that just because you were successful with it and this is how you did it may not always be successful for other, other people. People act differently, behave differently, and learn differently. Sometimes you need to read, sometimes you need to view it, and sometimes you need to read and view it and listen to make sure you really understand what's being presented to you. The other thing is, as a potential guest, don't wander away from the original question. Don't go along until you have nothing else to say. And one other tip, keep your eye on your watch. You are only given so many, so many minutes within a given time. A lot of hosts have sponsors and are running commercials, and they fit it to a format. It's usually a minute between intro and the body, 12 minutes on the body, two, three minutes for identification and a commercial, the rest of the 12 minutes, and then the ending commercial. Be mindful of that because the host has the right to cut you off and stop you and redirect you to where you need to be. So keep that in mind. And the third, mastering your interpersonal skills. And the two most important keywords and phrases you should take away from this webinar is accountability and responsibility. You are responsible for how you behave when you're being interviewed and you're accountable for what you're saying. So if you're quoting somebody directly, please tell the host or tell the guests or tell the participants or the potential audience, you are quoting somebody verbatim, word for word. And you can find Dr. Seuss on page 83 at the URL. Yes, I really did write the sleep book in order to put kids to sleep and tell them where they can find it. Because social media now is getting very, very wary of people using copyrighted material without permission. My suggestion to you as the host is to make sure that your guest has all written to the people or person or publishing company and obtain written permission for that because you will need to protect yourself should YouTube or Facebook have a problem with you using copyright permission without permission. The same thing goes with direct quotes. Make sure you put in where you got the information from and where you got the quotes from, who wrote the article, the name of the newspaper, of the magazine, who gave the presentation. You are required by law to provide that type of information. So you need to do that. Responsibility, you are responsible for asking pertinent questions so that the guests can share their information and also so the audience can identify with you and the audience and providing the information they have to the best of their ability. Accountability, 
and responsibility is also the re good for the host to have as well because they need to be able to back up what they're saying. So those are the things that you need to be aware of when you are doing a podcast and what you expect also from your potential guests and our participants or even a co-host. I want to thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Masterclass, Empower Your Voice, Unlocking Your Podcasting Potential. You can see this all over again at youtube.com forward slash Passionate World Radio, Passionate World Talk Radio, facebook.com forward slash Passionate World Radio. You can also go over to education dot passionate world talk radio dot com forward slash masterclass it will be posted there also on passionate world talk radio dot com and it will be forward slash blog and will be posted on that website transcripts are available upon request either text 484-364-1032 email pwr network llc at gmail dot com and if you have any questions about additional training, I run classes on Empower Your Voice, Unlocking Your Podcast Potential. We can either do it in a group or we can do it one-on-one. -on -one. Schools and businesses, organization, Boys and Girls Club, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, listen up. I also have arranged it to train according to K through high school for podcasts used in education and the subjects that are taught in today's private schools, charter schools, public schools, stay at home, homeschooling, universities, and universities. Please contact me at 484 364 1032. Put down what you're interested in, how you want it presented, and we will then arrange a meeting for us to discuss it. Or you can email us at pwrnetworkllc at gmail.com. Thank you once again for joining me this afternoon. And remember, contact me, Lillian S. Caldwell, at Passionate World Talk Radio Network. Educate, enlighten and entertain.